Good afternoon, I'm Giovanni Dennis with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're joining us online at onespotmedia.com. IGL Limited says efforts are being made to ensure hospitals have adequate medical oxygen to meet the increasing demand. Managing Director of IGL, Peter Graham, says the company is in dialogue with overseas partners to prevent any further shortage. Shamila Pullen has this Midday News follow-up. Given the rapid increase in COVID-19 cases, hospitals have been complaining about a shortage of medical oxygen. The oxygen is needed to help treat patients, especially those who are battling severe forms of COVID-19. IGL Limited has been the sole supplier of medical oxygen in the country. The company's managing director, Peter Graham, says it's a problem they are working to fix. In a situation like that, all demand or demand high from everyone and we put us straight. So we are more confident now that we have now established more relationships with more suppliers overseas. So in the event that there is a disruption in one or two, it will be easier for us to go to, to move from primary supply pool to secondary supply pool, maybe to tertiary supply. Mr. Graham says the company supplies oxygen to a central tank. He says where things get more complicated is when oxygen has to be supplied in cylinders, for example, at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. So that also compounds the challenge for them because it now becomes a logistic issue. I give a quick example. A small hospital may have an inventory of 21 cylinders. If they use three a day, that's a week, and that is sufficient. A week supply on hand. We are seeing cases where that three a day goes now to 15 a day. Only 21 cylinders. What was one week of inventory now becomes just little over a day. Since the issue has been at the forefront, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said it's a challenge for his ministry to be depending on one supplier of medical oxygen. But Mr. Graham says having more companies to provide medical oxygen for the health system would not have prevented the current shortage. Whether you're a single supplier or there are multiple suppliers, any supply chain is factored than a projected demand. So it doesn't matter if you're a single supplier or multiple. It factors on a, a particular level of demand. And when that demand goes well above, whether you're asking the supplier or most the supplier is struggling. In addition, Mr. Graham said that it is not practical to store large amounts of oxygen. He says product loss begins to take place at a rapid rate after two weeks. It's what is called a cryogenic liquid. It is stored in liquid form at very cool temperature. The boiling point is minus 183 degrees. So it's not a product that you can buy and store for six days. Months. It can't be stored in a warehouse. It has to be bought and used in a relatively short time. So you could buy a tank of medical oxygen, not use it, and when you are ready to use it, you have an empty tank. That's the nature of the product. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. 13 more persons have died from COVID 19. The number of COVID-19 deaths now stands at 507. Meanwhile, Jamaica recorded 821 new COVID-19 cases on Tuesday. This pushes the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases to 32,728. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded most of the new cases with 226, followed by St. Catherine with 195. Meanwhile, 371 persons remain in hospital. 29 are critically ill. There are currently 16,513 active cases. Much has been said about remedies to treat or prevent the coronavirus, but calls are being made for the Ministry of Health to push the use of essential vitamins to boost the immune system. The issue was raised at a Joint Select Committee of Parliament on the COVID-19 pandemic. More in this report. Sanitize, mask up, social distancing, the protocols to lessen the chances of getting the coronavirus. However, at Tuesday's Joint Select Committee of Parliament on the COVID-19 pandemic, a suggestion that the message should go further. I go back to, and I can supply the information around vitamin C. Um, more and more research is coming out confirm its, its, its effectiveness. Um, one of the most successful countries in managing 
the, the COVID crisis has been New Zealand. That is one of the, 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 the agents that they have used in their treatment protocols. Ministry of Health officials, however, say there is an inclusion of vitamin C in the treatment protocols. Well, I was actually here on the ministry website trying to find it, but I didn't see it at all. Well, it is listed as um, one of the measures that we are not rejecting, and, um, and so it is listed among other uh, elements that will enhance our immune system. So there are many different things that people will do, and so it is, it is not to say, because we do know that many studies have in fact looked at a number of vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. But the evidence is still unclear as it relates to the impact to treat critically ill COVID patients. What I would really hope to see is that this information is being conveyed, especially to the persons who, who are vulnerable. So the lower socioeconomic groups where we're seeing the higher death rates are probably the persons who are not able to afford this, this type of approach of, of immune boosting. So perhaps that information, that dissemination could be facilitated, especially in those socioeconomic groups. I do know that we have said, you know, boost the immune system, and that has been, um, you know, propo proposed. So perhaps we do need to say to persons, just boost your immune system. But I do know, for example, that in some facilities um, that vitamin C is actually utilized. Meanwhile, the Minister of Health says people who have had COVID must still take both doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine and observed the protocols. Right now, the guidance is that we want persons to develop adequate immunity. And so it is two doses that is still being recommended for persons, even though they have had the COVID, because we're not sure that what is the level of immunity. So right now, the guidance may change, but right now, we're sticking with that. Hydrochloroquine has been used to treat COVID patients. Doctors have been pushing to use ivermectin. However, there is a caution on using it because its effectiveness against COVID-19 has not been established. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. The Jamaica Teachers Association is not in support of the Education Ministry's recommendation to extend the school year for grade 6 students. The recommendation was made to facilitate the grade 6 diagnostics test beyond July 2 when schools would normally close. President of the JTA, Jasford Gabriel, is questioning the rationale behind setting the exam outside of the normal school year. Between May 26 and July 2, which is the scheduled closure of the school year, you have another clear month there. And all we are talking about here is a diagnostic test. So it's not like you're going to be teaching a curriculum. A diagnostic test is to basically assess where gaps are. Mm -hmm. And so the big question is why would you go beyond July 2 for students to come back just to sit a diagnostic test to be administered by, by teachers? He argues some students may not return to school for the exam. It's beyond me as to why is it that we would be calling back students and teachers to sit at diagnostic test when we must know, based on history and the data we have before us, that we'll not be reaching many of our students, and indeed not many of them will show up for that either. More than 40 persons were taken into custody early this morning following a raid by police at a guest house in Discovery Bay, St. Anne. Acting on intelligence, police raided the clock tower guest house around 4 a.m. in search of a suspect in a shooting murder incident in St. James. But on arrival, persons from various addresses across the island were taken into custody to determine whether they are wanted. We managed to uh, capture two persons of interest in this parish, uh, which we believe may be able to assist us with investigation in a triple murder in um, Steertown. So we are pursuing uh, with a view to see how best we can uh, bring some, uh, some assurance to the citizens of this parish. Head of the St. Anne Police, Superintendent Dwight Powell, is appealing to guest house operators to use diligence when admitting persons as some criminals may seek refuge in the parish. ...is that persons are converging from elsewhere into St. Anne. But I just want to assure those persons that are converging here that there is no hiding place absolutely in St. Anne for anybody. We have 
a very good intelligence network and we will find these persons and we'll bring them um, to books to account. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. Family and friends of a missing fisherman at the Belmont Fishing Beach in St. Elizabeth remain hopeful that their loved one will be found. This as a search for him continues. Sandy Williams reports. The disappearance of 75-year-old Leonard Williams is not sitting well with his family and friends at the Belmont Fishing Beach in St. Elizabeth. Mr. Williams went fishing last Friday. However, his daughter, Carmita Williams, says she knew something was wrong after several attempts to call him later that same day proved futile. But even then, she was still hoping for the best up to Saturday. I'm going to work on Saturday morning. I'm going to call him from Friday morning. Straight until 4.30 in the evening when I come home, I realize that all he called me, I called me, I call me and I get anything. So I said, I'm going to look for him. And when I go look for him now, somebody will tell me, I said, I see him going to see him. And he will come back. And so nobody in the pickup say he will come from and see from the Friday. So I come and make people know and I go report it to the police. However, it wasn't until Sunday a search was launched. That search was unsuccessful. By Monday, news emerged that a boat was six miles out at sea with a body of a man in it. This prompted the search party to go back out. It was six miles, about to ten miles So four boats that was go. The marine police, the fish agents kept them out, and two other fishing boats. None of them were fine. The calling that we get from the standards board, that direction, I don't think it's right. So we go, they say down and out, then we go down and out, circle round and round, get back. Almost run out of petrol, get back. Then we saw a couple more boats go round and around circling, but all of them just discover the body, so we have to come back to that. We get the news that they found the body, and it's inside, but it's a fake news. They say they're going to find him. Because they're going to find him, they're going to find him, they're going to find him. As the search continues, Carmita is hoping that her father will be found soon. I just want to close, you know? Mm -hmm. Just want to see if I can bear my father. A time when I feel like, you know, I can go near. Right now, I plan to go live near. I'm going to live in my house, you know, when they don't have because I just am mine now. Because I just two of us in got, and I'm only one, I'm the only one down here with him. So, I just want to. That's why I can't find him because well, like, right now me just we just would mind and call me phone and tell me so they're not carrying me. You know, you know in a no good condition but I'm willing I'm willing to hug him up. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to kiss him, I'm willing to do everything, you know. Sandy Williams, T V J News. We go now to neighbouring Manchester where yam vendors along the Winston Jones Highway in the parish are concerned about the likely impact that construction of the May Pen to Williamsfield leg of the South Coast Highway may have on their business. The vendors believe the proposed construction of similar shops on the opposite side of the highway will leave them at a disadvantage as they will miss out on much of the sales. I've been here from the road is built until now. On this very occasion, we only hear that highway is coming and we don't know what is all about highway. This is our livelihood. We hear that we gotta, they're going to build the market along two sides of the road, which we are not agree with it. We need the market to be on one side of the road. That means we can get our customers from Kingston and from Mobe, which is coming. Another concern is that they are going to cut down that inside there. What is going to happen when the dirt starts flying? Uh, dust, just, just look at it yeah, as, a, as a high mountainside. So when the dust starts blowing, what's going to happen to our building and our goods? Meanwhile, Councillor for the Belfield Division, where the Yam Park is located, Maria Mitchell, is in support of the vendors. He too is calling for greater communication between the vendors and the road construction company. They remain here. They can be an over 
passage or an undercarriage where the persons coming from the Kingston end of the highway will have access to here. I support that because the vendors would have issues with two locations, operating costs, and also the availability of the persons and the patients who come and patronize them. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. Next edition of the health report, we'll look at why vaccines are important. It is what will protect us. It is what is needed to control the, the pandemic. And it is the sensible thing to do, the wise thing to do. And also for anyone with common sense would not wish his mother, his grandmother, his father or his grandfather to succumb to a disease that you could prevent. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. Concentrate on taking slow, deep breaths. Focus intently on something in the room. Cough and relax your arm. The news in sports, the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission has sought to allay fears regarding COVID-19 vaccines by noting that the World Health well, that the World Anti-Doping Agency has no problem with the current vaccines being made available. But what, if anything, is in place to protect athletes for any possible anti-doping violations caused from the vaccines? Jermaine Brown reports. Jamaican sportsmen and women have expressed reservations about the COVID-19 vaccine. Among them, 2015 World Championship shot put bronze medalist Odane Richards, who had some searching questions about the vaccines when TVJ Sports spoke with him in February, including whether they could contain banned substances. Well, currently, I'm still on the fence. Uh, there's still a lot more to be learned from uh, the vaccinations, the different types. As I understand, there are many. Uh, what are the implications of the vaccine? Will there be any anti-doping uh, considerations taken? Uh, will it be safe, you know, for athletes to perform? You know, um, we must take the pandemic seriously, but we must also take life after track seriously. But Chairman of the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO, Alexander Williams, has sought to allay those fears by, among other things, noting that they have begun making WADA's position on the COVID-19 vaccines known to athletes. WADA's position is that um, they don't see any issue or problem with any of the vaccines that are now available worldwide. They have a memorandum of understanding with uh, various pharmaceutical companies, including, five, including Pfizer, as well as that industry's representative body, which is the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers and Associations. And what they're saying is that uh, they continue to work along with those bodies. But just how accurate is WADA's assessment of the vaccines? To this end, Williams notes that contingencies are in place should any of the vaccines result in anti-doping rule violations in the future. They stress that the health of the athletes is a primary concern of water. So that if an athlete has to take a vaccine and it turns out that the vaccine may be quote-unquote problematic, then the relevant anti-doping organization, which includes JATCO, would have to forego or adjust its results management process, that is, how it would proceed with an anti-doping rule violation. Williams has also stressed that JADCO through WADA would continue to monitor developments regarding COVID-19 and the vaccines. Jeremaine Brown reporting for TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for primetime news. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.